Conscious Entrepreneurs, you're tuned in to the hottest show on IGTV. It's the Mo Today series on Black Muslim businesses. And I'm so excited. I'm going to be talking to a sister that's deep into the fashion industry. Um, we're going to really dive into that, uh, the science of it, the concept of it. Um, I'm just excited about that um, because, you know, it's so important to me that our Black Muslim businesses are highlighted, um, that we are showcased, that people get a chance to see us, and people really get an opportunity to understand that we are a, um, a force to be reckoned with. So I see my sister Akia is here, but sis, we're gonna give it about five minutes to allow everybody to get into the room, um, and then we'll go from there. But I wanna make sure that our black Muslim businesses our highlight, are highlighted and showcased and that we have the encouragement and the tools and the mental strategies that are needed for us to be successful in this world of business. And I started the Mind of an Entrepreneur movement in 2009. Um, I did it right after my father passed away because he was always um, pushing me with my knowledge of business. And I just said, you know what? In dedication to him I'm gonna do this and let's see how far it goes and this is how far it's gotten us weekly shows I've written a lot of content um, we're gonna be moving into television soon and creating our own network so there's some really exciting things coming up you know one of the things that happens in a uh, predatory capitalistic society is that capitalism absorbs everything Right, So it absorbs the culture, it absorbs the individuality, it absorbs the unity. It just kind of is like a vortex that absorbs everything. And what we are doing is working to introduce a new way of doing business that does not absorb and destroy people, but that opens up and expands people and allows them to find problems in their communities solve them by the introduction of goods and services um, that will make life better for the people that are in their families and that are around them. So that's kind of um, the goal for the directory. We've been having some groundbreaking shows. Um, if you visit my YouTube channel, there's a link in the bio. You can binge on past episodes. Um, we're just a really beautiful group of people that I just believe that everybody should get to know, honestly. Um, if you are a person in business and you wanna meet some people who have a new edge, cause let me tell you what happens. You know, I mentioned that capitalism absorbs everything. Well, what's happening is that um, our culture, the arts and our expression that have been um, produced or that are that is born out of our struggle um, is getting absorbed into the broader community. People are grabbing onto it. Um, they're watering it down um, because it doesn't come out of their struggle. But there has to be something new that comes on. And what I wanna say is that as black Muslims in business, in the arts and everything, we are on the cusp of that brand new creation that the world is looking for. They've absorbed and ate up everything else. It's like Pac-Man, right? Um, but here we are coming with a way of con conducting ourselves, a way of civilization, a way of uh, promoting black excellence, okay? That um, is beyond anything that's ever been seen before. And I just feel like you should experience it. We're worth investing in, we're worth doing business with, we're worth getting to know. So with that, I'm going to, let me invite my sister on um, because I see everybody coming into the room and she comes in, we'll get started because I want you to learn about, we have so many aspects of fashion that come out of our community and that especially come out of the black Muslim community. And um, it's just time for people to get to know us because people don't know us. A lot of people in the world think that black people are very monolithic, right? We're all the same. Or we're all kind of crunched into the same packaging, but uh-uh, that's not true. Some some fashion fashion sis. Come out of our 
Well, like I'm salam. Can you hear me? I can hear you well. I just need okay. to see you better. <laughs> right. It's so crazy. I tried to do it on my laptop, but I didn't get your live invite on the laptop. And so I said, well, let me switch to the phone. That's okay. You look great. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Likewise. You look great. I love that, Tam. I see the patterns in the outfit. Yeah, this is one of mine. So, Listen, <laughs> like, that's, that's I heard you right. tell Mandine in his uh in his lives, like, how you gonna have a boutique if you don't know how to dress <laughs> <laughs> or represent? Oh my gosh, I saw yes, the Lakeham sis. I don't know if I gave well, you. The I get so excited sometimes. I'm just like, ah! I always remember. <laughs> let me make sure I give you the greetings. Yes, yes I told Mandine, you got to be able to dress, you know. And he's right. always sharp. And I was looking through your page, and you're always sharp and creative. And Praise be to Allah. I always like to thank us for being who we are because the most honorable Elijah Muhammad gave us a mindset. He said, accept your own and be yourself. yourself. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Nobody can really move into the next levels of civilized society unless they accept themselves and love themselves. It all starts with the thought. Mm -hmm. And the thoughts inside of us is what actually creates what goes on outside of us. So I'm anxious to pick your brain and see the thoughts that create all these beautiful creations. So introduce yourself to the audience and talk to us about your fashions or boutiques or what, whatever it is. I see them as fashions, but I'm yes, going to do it. <laughs> okay, no problem. Yes, ma'am. So assalamualaikum, everyone. My name is Akia Muhammad. I am based out of Detroit, Michigan. That's number one. <laughs> in the house. That's right. And so um, my boutique is called Aria's Apparel and Accessories. Mm -hmm. um, I established the boutique in 2017. And where the idea came from was, so I'm sure like many of us who came in the nation, you know, I came in in, in, um, in, the, in the late 90s. Okay. So I was still fairly young. I was just starting out my career in banking. Mm -hmm. And, you know, very conservative and obviously mm -hmm. with transitioning into Islam, you know, we have a conservative way of dress, too. So, you know, I found it a bit challenging at times to try to find things that um, I could wear. Mm -hmm. um, either It was too short. It was too tight. You know, things like that. So, like I said, we've all kind of been through that. And um, there was maybe two stores at the time that I was lucky enough to find that you know uh catered to what i was looking for mm -hmm. macy's and ashley stewart mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well at the time i don't know if ashley stewart is even around yet but i had like learners express those okay. kind of places yep. mm -hmm. and so but um you know um not everybody you know i think over time as my income increased you know i could continue to shop at those stores mm -hmm. but not every sister mm -hmm. can do that you know so fast forward i thought about the fact that i always got compliments on my clothes how i dressed and i knew that there was still a need even seeing the sisters coming into the ranks as you know i had been in the ranks for some time mm -hmm. they struggled with trying to find uh, things to wear mm -hmm. um, there was that time where we were wearing indian garments mm -hmm. that's not us Mm -hmm. You know, at a minimum, you know, you want to still feel and be yourself, but yes. still be modest. Yes. So Arias was birthed um, and I wanted the name to kind of represent modesty to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. So Arias actually means humble woman. Um, Ooh, well, and then there's some other. Go ahead. I like that. Yeah. And then there's some other derivatives of it, too, that does um, actually mean modesty. So, or lioness of God, something to that effect as well. Mm -hmm. But anyway, that's how um, I came up with the name because I wanted it to be as close as possible to what I was striving to uh, bring to fruition. Um, so, yep, I started in 2017. Um, it's funny because my employer at the time, because I was still working a nine to five, mm -hmm. um, very big in uh, the community in Detroit. They promote a lot of business um, type courses and things like that that's happening in the city. Mm -hmm. So it was like early February and um, I was reading a newsletter and they talked about a, a nonprofit um, incubator called Bill Institute. Mm -hmm. And Bill basically, they have several layers, but in short, the initial, initial class was about taking an I idea in and make in creating a business plan, you know, and um, hopefully coming out of the class with a, a business. Yes. So <laughs> I think we scrapped the business plan, mm -hmm. but I came out of the class with an LLC, 
you know, I opened up my checking, I got a virtual mailbox, you know, so on and so on. That year of 2017, more or less, that's when I really was just getting all of the things in, 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 um, in order, inventory, a website, you know, all of that mm -hmm. stuff. So I really didn't start actively working the business until really 2018. So um, technically, it'll be my five year anniversary next month. Right. But I say really four, because that's really when I started really, you know, working the business. Mm -hmm. So um, but the the styles more or less, like I said, it's I, it's I say it's more contemporary and it's modest. Yeah. You know, I don't push the modesty as much because what I notice about us as women, when we like nice things, we just like we buy it. We just like right. We just like it. You know, but. When they come in the shop or when they shop with me, you know, then we kind of talk about the aspects of the business and why I chose the clothes that I chose and mm -hmm. so forth and so on. So, I, you know, what? Yeah. it's interesting because I was studying something, I think, over the weekend about culture and how culture extends a people into the future. And through the development of fashion, a culture can be expressed. And I remember somewhere in the 90s, I was working on a program where we were going into, uh, I think it was called Welfare to Work. And so we were taking women who were going from welfare into the mm -hmm. environment and having to show them how to distinguish between nightclub wear and business wear. Yes, and then on top of that, there was then the battle of when you would go into corporate, and you know this from being into banking, the idea of dressing a, in a masculine way and the masculinization of the woman is very real. And yes. so, mm -hmm. through the clothes, we are dictated through, our mindset is dictated, where they want us to say, well, the more masculine you are, the more aggressive you are, the more hardcore you are, the more successful you can become. And right. then mm -hmm. we take this turn on the other side of the spectrum that says, okay, that's if you're in corporate, but if you're not, the more clothes you take off, the louder voice will give you and the more money will allow you to earn. So I call that the weaponization of our, of our virtue and our modesty. It's been weaponized. So the mm -hmm. modest woman is said, just put this sheet over your head or wear this long skirt and go sit down in the corner and don't say nothing. Because unless you dress in a masculine way or unless you take your clothes off, you can't say nothing. Absolutely, right. And so what I love that you're doing is you're empowering that, that covered woman, but that woman of dignity. And not necessarily saying, well, you need to be modest, you need to, but really just saying, you know what? Let's be women of dignity. Let's be civilized women. Because like you said, when we like something, we like it. Right. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, it's interesting because I don't have a physical store, okay. but I did in 2019, I was blessed enough to be able to open up a pop-up shop for six months. Nice. And I love that interaction with the customers. Mm -hmm. Hence why, you know, when obviously 2020, because um, I do vendor events too. In 2020, when the pandemic was really, you know, big, I didn't do any that year, but I realized how much I, I missed the people interaction. Mm -hmm. And so last year or this past summer, I did get back out there and I really did well. And, you know, again, people love the clothes. I had returning customers, you know, it was good to see faces, mm -hmm. stuff like that. But, um, you know, I love being able to help a person style themselves. I love to get, and they, and most of my customers know I'm honest. I'm not going to lie to you. If it mm -hmm. don't look good on you, I'm not going to tell you it looks right, good. Right. And if it looks good, then I will, you know, so, so those are the things I think I miss and I love about just being in this space mm -hmm. um, is, you know, like I said, the interaction with the customers and being able to, um, help them to feel good about themselves. And like you said, to give them that confidence, you know, cause th there's been situations where they chose something that they would have never probably thought what they would wear. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, come to find out it looked really good on them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so I love those types of uh, interactions. Yeah. And what you're doing is really, we, we know that a lot came to make himself known. No, right. And so through your interactions with our sisters, 
and really helping them to understand how to be classy, how to be more beautiful, and then them just seeing you is mm -hmm. making a lot known. Because when they see you and you look beautiful, there's something about the woman that when we see somebody else in a certain way, we go, oh, I like that. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. want to be that way. And this is a great way to play off of the whole Willie Lynch mindset where we compete against each other. See, because when they see you looking fine and you're looking beautiful and they can connect to you, then that becomes your lifeline, if you will, to, to get them in and you can de-weaponize the whole concept of modesty for them. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. So tell us about some of your designs. Um, you said it's contemporary. Is it contemporary casual? What, what is it? Yep. It's predominantly contemporary casual. I like the whole casual wear. You know, I don't step into the um, more, uh, you know, you go into a, a ball or whatever space. I stay so in no that room. And no. Pop <laughs> Got it. Got no. It. <laughs> Yeah, I stay into the casual contemporary. Um, and it's not necessarily my design. So let me just kind of, you know, clear that up. So one of the things that I, I do as a um, a boutique owner or um, retailer is I source a lot of my clothes wholesale. Mm -hmm. um, predominantly, it's not, you know, a lot of people go to L.A., which there is a lot of my clothes that come from L.A., but I have them come from other spaces, too. I've had okay. some source from Italy. I've had some source from Europe before. So, you know, it just depends. And I love going to the trade shows, mm -hmm. um, which is obviously, you know, magic in Las, Las Vegas. Um, and that's, pre yeah, I love going there. And, you know, they have different ones that are going on at the, at the same time. I've never been to the one in Wynn, at the Wynn, but um, I generally go to the Las Vegas Con Convention Center. So um, I pretty much source quite a few of my clothes from going to trade shows and, you know, through my wholesaler platforms. You know, that's awesome because a lot of people, they like to wear the title designer. And that's mm -hmm. fine. But I think a stylist is really important because a stylist can help you pull together things in your closet that maybe you didn't think went together, but it still looks nice. A stylist mm -hmm. can help you really express yourself through your, your clothing. Like I, I always like to say that my style is, it represents, you can tell I'm a Muslim when you see me, but I'm also got a little international flair about it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? If, and and yes. I'm putting combinations together that make people just think, okay, who is she and where is she from? And for myself, um, with all the traveling that I've, I've done, um, I spent many, many years on the road as a business consultant, but I didn't want to be wearing suits every day. Mm -hmm. You know, I might take a couple, but that, that just wasn't my thing. And then when you're doing business in Africa and places like that, it's hot. <laughs> right. so you want to find something flowy that still looks nice because what, what a lot of times we don't realize is that we take for granted here in America while, yeah, there's some villainization and some danger that comes from dressing scantily. But when you travel abroad, you show up scantily dressed. Exactly. And there really ain't no rules for what they can say and do to you. So you want to be covered and, and, and nice. So I like the idea of um, casual wear or maybe everyday mm -hmm. wear mm -hmm. that you do. And the fact that you source it from different places. Go ahead. Yes. No, I was just going to say, um, yep, I kind of stay in the casual lane. I know that when the pandemic hit, a lot of people pivoted in their businesses and they went to loungewear. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, while a lot of people I know in the boutique space did very, very well in there, it's been hard for them to kind of pivot back or transition back into maybe what they were selling prior um, because now they're known for that thing. Yeah. So it's like, I, I didn't want to do that. Well, I knew I would probably make some money. There's no doubt about it. Mm -hmm. I just said that's, but that's not, that's not what I sell. So mm -hmm. I don't want to, you know, I, I sell a few like, you know, jogger sets, but it's only been like a handful. 
that's not, you know, I didn't transition my whole business yeah. for that reason. And um, so, yeah, I, I kind of stuck my guns and stayed in that space. People were still shopping, though, because they were anticipating getting back out into the world, you know. So mm -hmm. I so I kept that mindset and said, OK, well, I know I still have my customers out there. Mm -hmm. And I had people, you know, DMing me, texting me and saying, hey, what you got new? So I knew that there was still that that expectation. So, yeah. Yeah, that was the other thing too. I stay out of the lounge wear space too. <laughs> yeah, and you know, um, it's touchy, you know. In yeah. The, in the civilized space that we try to present present from, um, I'm even skittish about wearing athletic wear outside. I just when I was brought up, I came in in the early '90s, mm -hmm. and um, the the whole concept of beauty and extreme beauty and just fixing yourself up so that you just looked amazing like a god was mm -hmm. how I was groomed into the nation and groomed into style and look. And so it's tough for me. Um, usually if I go to the gym and I wear some workout wear, I come straight back home. And okay. <laughs> I got to the point now where I could like I have on a t-shirt, but it's added. I added this long, it's like a long cardigan scarf, cardigan. Just, mm -hmm. you know, dress it up. So I understand where you're coming from. And so many people went extreme with the lounge wear. You remember the whole drama with um, Sister Monique and people wearing their bonnets outside and- Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do remember that whole situation. But she she was she definitely had some valid points. I did not disagree with her. Yes. You know, because like you said, you know, coming up when we came up, I don't think I ever saw my mom go out the house and her in a bonnet or her scarf or whatever. It's just different times that we're living in. It's really interesting how we've transitioned what we deem to be appropriate in out out in the world. You know what I'm saying? Or or it's more like maybe, you know, I'm not trying to impress you. So, you know, I'm going to do me kind of mentality, but it's like, but what, when, like we know, when there's a certain way in which a person dresses, there's a certain level of respect too, um, that you get that mm -hmm. comes with that. Mm -hmm. So I want, you know, I don't know. It's just the, the, the world we live in definitely is different from when we were growing up for sure. Well, you know what I, I liken it to, and I say this a lot that it's, it's really still Yakub's grafting process. Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. So he's just grafting us away and dangling that carrot. And once he pulls us away and, and then we get that subset of people who decide that this behavior is okay, then he picks one of us and gives us a lot of accolades and a lot of money. And then everybody, mm -hmm. okay, well, maybe it's okay to dress like a stripper. And maybe it's okay. And so now we have this whole culture of us as black women that when we dress up, we look like we're going to a club and we think that that's appropriate. Even sometimes when we go to church, we, mm -hmm. think, we think it's okay. And, and the amount of attention that, is, that they get as a result of it is what becomes intoxicating. Mm -hmm. And so we forget that... Um, you know, a little mystery makes sense. But when you strip all the mystery away from us as a woman, where people can't tell, you know, right. if somebody's, you know, somebody said, you know, well, sister, sister got a really nice body. I'm not going to show you that. I'm not going to put that out there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And But we just, we've allowed ourselves to be grafted away from civilized way of being. Right. Um, right, because even sure. our grandmothers and them back in the day, you know, they had their little prestige about them sometimes. Mm -hmm. Put things together. Even if they wore like cocktail dresses, if you remember, there would be a coat. Like a nice taffeta coat or cape or shawl right. scarf mm -hmm. or something over it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that still said, I'm still modest. Right, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I want to ask you, you in the styling business, how much does pop culture um, impact what people want when it comes to their dress, regardless of their size or shape? Mm -hmm. how, does that how does that impact? I think it impacts 
quite a bit um, because I get a lot of, even my uh, repeat customers, sometimes as a point, great example, my I'll give you a great example with my sister, one of my younger sisters. Now, one of my younger sisters, she's in her 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 30s, mid 30s, um, and she doesn't really shop with me. She likes the Fashion Novas, the that kind of stuff, right? Yeah. And so, but um, she saw a coat that Fantasia wore and she, the, immediately she sends me a text and says hey do you have this and i said no i said but i know where i can get it from you know but i get those types of texts often mm -hmm. some in which i have to kind of tell them because it depends on what it looks like you know i don't want to run with the trend that's yeah. the other thing too you i have some trendy items but that's not that's not my business mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. but it's all about pop culture you know they see it and they want it and i get a lot of response or a lot of um, people dming me and asking me can i get this or do i have this and i'm like no but i know what boutique you can go get it from you know <laughs> because i i'm trying to get them in the habit of if you see it with them buy it with them i'm not gonna buy i you know and that's the other thing too which a lot of customers don't understand is that when they want one thing I have to buy six or eight of them. Yeah. I, I can't just buy the one, yeah. you know? Yeah. And so, you know, yeah, you buy the one, but then I have to, I have to sell the other six, you know? So, yeah. But pop yeah. culture plays a great deal in yeah. terms of styling. Behind taking certain pop culture pieces and incorporating them into what you do, like say that coat that Fantasia had on, but then buying it and putting it maybe with uh, a you know pants or something Correct. underneath. Yes, I have done that a couple of times where it might be styled by you know someone a celebrity they wearing it as a dress. Mm -hmm. I'll style it with some slacks or or you know yeah. or something to that effect. Um, so yes, so I've done that many of times as well. Where okay, it looks one way when they see it, but show them different options of how it can be worn differently mm -hmm. to make you look a little more unique. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And speaking of unique, that's the other thing too. I remember, um, and you know, I, I listened to Mandine's and I thought it was awesome that he had a, a men's boutique or men's store. I was like, mm -hmm. Oh, that's great. That was you know, awesome. cause it was, yeah. it was, and it was good to see and hear some of the challenges that he had was having that were pretty much the same as a, a women's boutique would have. One of the things he, he talked about was, you know, men not wanting to have but the same thing another man has in the shop. Women are the same way. You know, one of the things that I like or appreciate is that, yes, I do have unique pieces as a boutique. You know, you only buy so many of a certain thing at times mm -hmm. anyway, so it's going to be unique. But the challenge I have, though, <laughs> some of my customers are funny. They won't post what they're wearing because they don't want nobody to know where they got it from because they yeah. don't want them to go get it. Yeah. And I actually had a customer tell me that. And I thought that was so funny. But I'm like, but I need the advertisement. You know, I need to let people see that, you know, I have customers who like what I have to offer. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, unique things. Um, I definitely have been told that I have unique uh, pieces which is a good thing mm -hmm. um and um yeah i like the different um like i said i like when i do buy things that are somewhat on trend or kind of in pop culture just showing different ways that you can style it did you yeah. see that documentary on netflix the name escapes me but it's with misa hilton and um damper dan it's out now on netflix and it's really cool because it, she talked about just creating the style culture of hip-hop and mm -hmm evolution and you have Mary J Blige on there and Joe to see and all of them talking about how they they were stylized and I see that you know with you because it's really a matter of just picking pieces that can you know at the end of the day we're all fishermen and women right right so we want to we want to look in a way that attracts people to us so that when they come to us we can show them and see them let them see who we are, but I'll also be an example. Right. So people mm -hmm. can see that you can still be modest and fly and, and be okay with that. And so I see that as you were talking, I was thinking about that documentary. If you haven't seen it, you should check it out. Um, okay. I think it's called Remix. Okay. <laughs> That's kind of fitting. <laughs> Given um, it's the hip-hop culture. <laughs> yeah. 
And so basically what they're saying is that they took and remixed fashion, mm. like traditional fashion with trends and created this new way of dress that has become, you know, hip hop. And that style has just gone around the world because mm -hmm. every designer at that time, the big fashion houses did not want to um, style hip hop artists. Or okay, that like makes sense. At that, for that matter. And so they had to create things that remixed, you know, traditional and upscale elegance, like a fur coat with mm -hmm. some jeans and Timberlands. You know, that, you see that a lot now. <laughs> you, see, yeah. Yeah, you see it a lot. Mm -hmm. And in Chicago and Detroit, we've always done that. We'll, we'll rock our fur with our boots and jeans. Like we don't have to be dressed up to wear our furs. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> we don't, we don't have a problem with that. So talk to me about the, um, the ins and outs of having an online boutique. I have a friend in DC that has an online boutique and some of the things that you mentioned, she also mentioned like having quantity issues, like how many do you buy? And then right. people saying, yeah, but I don't want other folks to know where I got my stuff from. Um, how do you get around that? <laughs> um, it's it, it's a challenge, um, but just having an online boutique in and of itself has its own challenges, you know, than a brick and mortar. Obviously, they can't feel in touch the, yeah. the product, you know, but the blessing is that I don't get a lot of returns at this point, which is good. I ask you, like, so your yeah. descriptions must be really good. I strive to let them be. And then, you know, I do have conversations with my customers. I get a lot of my sales um, on Facebook, ironically enough. You know, we have the Facebook shop that connects with our website. Mm -hmm. So I'm able, you know, customers ask questions. Um, I'm pretty responsive to the questions. And I try to be as very, you know, detailed in terms of the item as possible. Um, so that's a good thing. But, yeah, sometimes it's kind of you know, obviously I'm curating the things for the shop and sometimes you don't know, you know, mm -hmm. how many to buy, if it's going to really be a good seller yeah. with the customer, you know, yeah. and, um, I, I used to, I don't do it as much now, but I used to go into my stories and kind of ask them like, you know, would you buy this versus this, you know, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. That feedback is good. But what I also notice, as you probably know, in social media world, you know, you get a lot of people who like but not necessarily a lot of those people who buy. Yeah. So that's the other thing too. So it's like, okay, you got to be careful when you're polling folks, you know, but I do have, um, um, I'm, I'm getting better or striving to get better this year. I should say with my digital uh, marketing, I don't run ads yet because, you know, I think, um, my time is better served with the um, email distribution list that I have, you know, mm -hmm. and um, and the, the phone numbers that I have that I do direct marketing to the customers that I know that I have bought in the yeah, past. This is not a warm market already. Absolutely. You already got so. a warm market. And one of the tricky things about social media that a lot of people don't understand is that it depends on how you've trained your social media followers. Mm -hmm. So if you've trained your people to just look at you, then that's all they're going to do. So even if you put a t-shirt up that costs a dollar, they're not going to get it because that's not how they're trained. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So what you're talking about is you're going to your warm market, your trained people who you know want to buy, who will buy if you got something cute. I was going to ask you another thing that I noticed, and now I'm seeing this with men. It's always been the case with women. Um, I was in, I think I was in South Korea at this mall, and they got this mm -hmm fashion mall like on the main floors of the mall it's real all high-end fashion names mm -hmm. that we recognize chanel you know gucci louis vuitton and then on the lower level is like their local stuff mm. okay so if you know anything about the south koreans they dress like they serve it even in the winter in the summer they be rocking uh fur coats and boots and it it's all about trying to be black culture like you know okay what I mean? um but they, they don't play. And so they have some really cool designs on the local floors. Like I, I bought a coat. They have, these, um, they have these oversized type coats that they wear and things like that. But mm -hmm. on the main floors, what I found was interesting was that the stuff is this big. <laughs> <laughs> but I know that with women. Like I saw this pink uh, cashmere Chanel coat. Mm -hmm. Beautiful floor length, 
but it was that big. And I think it was like a size 10. Mm -hmm. so the sizing is off, which is awkward. Um, yeah. I noticed that even now from men, you know, where it's like, how do you find a way? That would be my fear for selling online is the sizing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, I don't know where this stuff comes or who's getting into it. It only could probably be people from that region of the country who are already very small people. Um, I think for us, even at our smallest, some of that stuff you couldn't get in because it's like short crotch and short legs and <laughs> narrow. And, you know, I, I don't even think, you know, my little niece or anybody could wear that stuff. Oh, wow. <laughs> it was real small. It's tiny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but that you bring up a good point because, um, you know, trying to um, source um, clothing from different, you know, vendor or wholesalers, mm -hmm. that can be a challenge. But once you kind of know, and you know kind of what their fit is okay. then i'm able to convey that to my customers through my details and the descriptions of what i'm selling and things okay. like that so that has that has definitely been a trial and error over yeah. time but i think i've gotten pretty good at being able to make sure that i'm very authentic and um you know providing the details about when the sizing is a little off mm -hmm. than what maybe you know um, U.S. sizes might be, you know, yeah. from what I'm selling. Or so, black girl size. Yeah. Or then the other side, other, the converse is true that when you go to Africa, everything's mm -hmm. big. You know? And say that again? Everything's big. You know, when you go to oh, Africa. Oh, really? I, I went shopping in, in Lagos and I was like, okay, why is this dress so big? And I'm like, oh, we can take it up for you. So it's just a matter of knowing, you know, sizes. So I think about that when I think about, um, there's a place that I go to in, um, and you can look it up. It's in um, Katanu in Benin called Nana Wax. Mm -hmm. And they Nana make Wax. Nana Wax and they're on mm -hmm. Instagram as well. They okay. make like some of the most beautiful cardigans and things like that, but everything's big. And that's because as Africans, they're, they're bigger. So I just thought about having an online boutique as you were talking like, like, how do you make that discernment? And I said, I guess you have to really explain to your customers yeah. and know how it's sized based on where you source it from. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Whether or not, you know, in the details are generally telling, you know, you need to size up or you need to size down, depending on what it is or if it's true to size. So, yeah, I try to be specific in those regards. Most times, though, you know, I'm trying stuff on myself. If I can't yeah. fit it, I know. And, that, and that's the thing, too. Some of my um, repeat customers, they know, like, if I can fit it, then they know that, you know, it's fine for them. But mm -hmm. if I tell them I can't, then they kind of stay away from yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So it depends. So, yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's definitely a science though, because obviously all people, you know, all sizes are not equal and obviously all of the clothes are not coming from the same places. Mm -hmm. And so the sizing is definitely going to be a challenge, but, um, you know, over time I've been able to kind of, you know, um, deal with that. Do you have um, a favorite as as or, or style? Do I have a favorite style? I like the whole, well, I guess, I don't know. Maybe it depends on the season because I love the whole bohemian look in the summertime. I love the yeah. linens and the flair. Yeah. I love that look. For the fall, like for fall, um, I I like the, well, maybe it's more color. But I was going to say, I definitely like um, more casual, casual date, just everyday wear. Uh, for the most part, my husband's funny because I don't care. And I don't know, maybe that's the MGT in me. Mm -hmm. But if I'm going to run errands, I don't know who I might run into. Never so never. I definitely go out the house, you know, looking pretty nice, like I'm going to work or something sometimes. He's like, where are you going? Mm -hmm. Even <laughs> when like, I fly, I don't play. Like, I don't dress down all the way down. Like, I wouldn't mm -hmm. be one of the ones with the bonnet and the lounge wear on when I fly. Like, I'm absolutely, a, even if I'm a little casual. I'm going to look, I'm going to look fly because you just right. never know who you're going to see, who you're going to sit next to. And I've met so many incredible people in airports mm -hmm. or on flight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is, that's, that's facts. Mm -hmm. And even, you know, and I think I've, um, my husband, even the same way, you know, we've, we've traveled a few times. Um, and, um, uh, we went to, I'll give you an example. We went to where we go, Bahamas. Yeah. And, uh, 
you know, we had on our linen and stuff, you know, we, I thought we were looking pretty fly. Yeah. And this white couple came up to me and um, was like, where, where are you guys from? What do you do? You know, all, mm -hmm. just trying to be all in the business. And mm -hmm. I was like, you know, Always and, uh, but it was based on our appearance, you know, yeah. and, you know, people pay attention. You never know who's paying attention. I think that's one of the key things that I think about when I'm going out, you know, wherever it is that I'm going. You know, you just never know. I mean, that people treat you differently based on how you look. Absolutely. And so we talked about that earlier yeah. when it came to, you know, taking, off, you know, women nowadays taking more stuff off, you know, depending on, you know, what you attract, they're going to treat you a certain way. Mm -hmm. And the opposite goes with when you when you're dressed, mm -hmm. you know, you're going to get treated a certain way. So mm -hmm. that's just the reality of it. When I first started in corporate, I would have my dad evaluate whatever I was going to wear. And that really? kind of <laughs> between us where I, I'd be like, Dad, I'm coming home. I got an interview. And we'd go to the store and he'd be like, yep, them shoes, um, that's, that's working. Because I, did, I never wanted to, to come off like I was trying to solicit something other than what I was soliciting. So absolutely business wear, attire, and things like that, you want to come across approachable, but yet you don't want to look like something else either, right? Right, and right. My, my dad, who I knew would be extra protective and, and all of that, he would help me pick out shoes, and he would tell me, he'd be like, mm, too sexy. You know, you see some <laughs> shoes, like, yeah, but the shoes, and he'd be like, mm, no, no, too sexy. He would He would say that to me, and so I would go and It'd be so funny because we spent all this time um, shopping and my brother be like, can I, can I get some clothes? Can a brother get some clothes? And he'd be like, no, no, she got an interview. She got this or that. But that was kind of like our, you know, our thing of just getting me together from a fashion mm -hmm. standpoint. And I would never come in front of dad with the va va voom bada bing. You know what I mean? Right, right. <laughs> Absolutely. So I'm going to switch gears because I wanted to ask you a question and it was more or less around because, um, you know, obviously I had to do some some homework, too. I obviously knew about you from the Sajda House, which was is an awesome project. Um, but uh, I saw that you have other businesses as well. So one of the things that I was going to ask you was in terms of, you know, how you um, capital and funding and things like that. So, um, you know, what's been your experience? Because I know for me. I don't have any loans. Um, I've been fortunate enough to get um, grant a grant. Um, and um, I actually did a pitch for my business and won money right. that way as well. But um, how have how, how have you been successful with funding your businesses and things? You know, sis, um, a lot of it has to do with either what's in your mind or how Allah decides to make you. Mm -hmm. um, because for me, I've never been lucky to get funding. Okay. Never. With all the businesses that I have. Um, I don't know. It's because I've always been Muhammad or what. I've always had to bootstrap my way. Mm -hmm. So okay. I've, when I was working as a consultant and traveling around the country, I was building my business in the airports and in the hotels at night. And I was building my businesses. And I was taking, my father always told me, invest in yourself. So I would take that money that I was working to do, to use and investing in my business and then just multiplying it and then just taking everything, you know, a step at a time. Even some of the bigger things, um, I've, I've always had to work and save or leverage and, you know, move things around. I, mm -hmm. think, I think a lot of it is like, um, I'll give you an example. It's like, you know, some of my family, they go to the casino. No, we don't gamble as Muslim. And I say- right. Like you can just come and I say, you don't want me there because I don't believe in it. So then mm -hmm. I'm going to mess y'all up. Y'all not going to believe And right. I say that because, um, and it's probably the case true too with having investors and things like that. Because um, I've had cars repossessed in my life. So at that point I was like, whatever I can't buy outright, I'm not driving. Okay. So if you mm -hmm. see me driving it, it's because I own it. You know, mm -hmm. and, and, I, and I just... It's kind of like my rule of thumb because it just gives me more freedom and mm -hmm. my stress levels. Mm -hmm. um, I participated on the other side where I've been the investor with people would pitch. And one of the things that I pushed to 
Um, I was on this South African think tank, um, like a shark tank type of thing. Mm -hmm. And I sisters, it was for women. I said, you all have to barter with one another. If you do graphic design and you do um, delivery of services, then maybe you barter and you figure it out that way. Because I found that on a grand scale, we don't get people that give us money. Mm -hmm. We figure out how to bootstrap it. Now, inshallah, that's changing. And one of the things that I hope to do with the Black Muslim Business Directory is build an ecosystem so that when people have businesses that they want to start, or let's say with you, you wanted to expand and go into a brick and mortar, there would be a group of us that you could come to and we could determine whether or not to invest in your business or help you and support you without the predatory practices that you get out here in the world. So no predatory lending and excessive royalty fees and things like that. Right. But actually invest in one another. And that's something that I'm working to develop. But for myself personally, um, I've had to bootstrap everything. Mm -hmm. so same. I, for the most part, the same. Mm -hmm. And what I try to do is create um, products that people can buy as opposed to just, and I know it's a very American thing to just go, look, ask folks for money. So, for example, you mentioned um, Sajda House, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's house. Um, I said, well, I'm going to create items that you can buy that will help to support right. the renovation. So you can buy a commemorative coin and make it interesting. And so while, yeah, I could get on the Internet and say, donate $10,000 and that would be great. And I've had mm -hmm. a couple people that have done that. But... I think it's much easier for me and just the way my psyche works to say it's easier for me to try to sell 200 coins mm -hmm. and something of value in exchange because not only am I am I concerned about my energy and my money psychology I'm concerned about yours as well so if you feel good about buying five commemorative Elijah coins for me because I know I'm giving you something of value mm -hmm receiving something of value that's going to appreciate i just think it makes better energy between us um you know but with that said like i said i know there's a space for that and that's one of the things that i'm working to help put together um i just i just have not been able to do that that just i think allah just didn't take me that way and so <laughs> part of what you see me doing a lot with the mind of an entrepreneur movement and the mental strategies and the manifestation classes, I had to go into the minister saying, look, everything begins with a thought and everything that's happening around us has a result, has, is a result of what we think of ourselves. And so I had to right. start going into those mental strategies to figure out a way. And it was easier for me to pray to a lot for an opportunity mm -hmm than it was for money to rain down on me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that a lot can't rain money down on you. It, it just, I probably, if I prayed that prayer would have a lot of doubt. And that doubt would probably impact my ability to attract it. But where I don't have any doubt is praying and saying, Allah provide me with an opportunity that's gonna help me to fund XYZ project. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of, that's the way my brain works. But some people are, you know, are good at that. Um, but I've just never been good at that. That's not my skill set. Mine is gotcha. opportunities, praying for the right relationship, you know, um, being in the right place at the right time, and then just trying to do right by those things that come to me. And that, that's, that's how I've done it. Yep. Nope. That makes perfect sense. Okay. Yeah, because I my whole thing is... You know, I being a small business still, I, I just don't foresee myself really getting into the loan space. Naturally, I hear people say, you know, that's how you build and, you know, you expand and you grow. Maybe so. But no. that's not in, that's not something that I'm looking to do at this point in time in my in my business. I rather continue to bootstrap. You know, there's grant money out there that can be had that they're not dictating to you how necessarily how you need to spend it in your business. Um, but, you know, there's other means of being able to get funding as opposed to, like you said, the predatory lending and things of that nature or you know, organizations is dictating to you how you can spend the funding 
for your business. Yeah, that's another thing I was going to say. Um, when you are creating new business models and ushering in a new way of thinking, and you're mm -hmm. thinking maybe a traditional or standard, like when we built the hospital in Maryland, we were tweaking an existing model. Mm -hmm. So it would have been very difficult for us to go and ask someone for money, or it actually was. We didn't, the whole thing cost $20 million. We got a $3 million loan, and that was at the end. Mm -hmm. um, but mm -hmm. that was because, for one, we didn't want anybody dictating to us what our programming needed to be or how we needed to do things. We said, we're going to comply by the state regulations and do what we have to do so that we're in alignment with that and that we're offering upscale services. But in mm -hmm. terms of them telling us, check these boxes, we knew that that would just make us no different from the hospitals that we're claiming to be different from. Right, right. Mm -hmm. In the, the whole idea of conscious entrepreneurship that you hear me talk about is we have to be careful about doing certain systemic things that are going to really make us just a, a mirror or a replica of what we're saying we're trying to, you know, get away like, or get away from. Right. Mm -hmm. So for me, instead of praying to receive the things that people who buy into predatory capitalism pray for i'm praying for a lot to give me more and more wealth and more and more goodness and opportunity and money and good homes and friendships and all of life. Of life. Then right. from mm -hmm. there because if he came to make himself known if he came to give us an inheritance then there has to be a way in which he says that he's going to do that so it's not necessarily my responsibility to find a way but it's my responsibility to hear him and see him and and that's just kind of how I run how I run my life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Using yes, that just basic hardcore, you know, nation of Islam wisdom teaching. You know what I'm saying? I like that nation of Islam wisdom teaching. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> always been how I've done it. Whether I mm -hmm. was in corporate and I was the only sister in the place, and everybody was all white, I'm sitting there talking to Master Farad Muhammad. They might be looking in their books, but I'm having a conversation with him. With the guy. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. I've had those many yeah I've had those couple of so moments <laughs> yes. I'm it does you it absolutely I, yeah. I, think I, I remember asking the minister a question and he he taught on principle and, and gave me these beautiful words and then at the end he said well talk it over with the most honorable with the honorable Elijah Muhammad and I just thought that was so cute <laughs> and I was like but that's real mm-hmm you know, all day. Or he'll That's ask me, did you get the answer from him that you were looking for? And I'm like, yeah, sometimes I'm still waiting. Mm -hmm. And if I'm still waiting, then the way I look at it is that means I haven't opened up to the answer because he's there. Mm -hmm. he's there. So then I go what? I go self-improvement, the basis of community development, mm -hmm. what I need to fix in here so that mm -hmm. I can open up to him. The other thing I was going to ask you too, um, which, you know, again, having multiple businesses, the systems, mm -hmm. one of the things that I'm struggling with still, cause I'm still a one woman show. Mm -hmm. um, and so trying to put the systems in place that will be able to one automate certain things, you know, I, I'll be honest, I hate social media, mm -hmm. but I know that that is, that's kind of an aspect of what I need to do to make sure that my business is successful. Mm -hmm. So um, just the systems in place and then inventory management is a challenge sometimes, um, you know, just um, trying to make sure that, you know, you get them, you get them photo shot, you get them to the site, you know, and, and so forth and so on. So I was just kind of curious in terms of your systems. And um, I thought I was talking to, I think you initially, and I was like, no, my little Rahima. That was right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've known her since she was a baby. So but um, but yeah, so I know that you have systems in place. So I, I, how did you go about in the trust factor? That's the other thing. It's hard. Yes. I project yeah. manage myself. Mm -hmm. So there's there's a calendar, there's to do lists, there's priorities, there's mm -hmm. organizing and um categorizing different aspects of the day. Um, and it's a whole management process and just managing 
myself. And right. I, um, I don't believe in balance with greatness. So I feel like if you're trying to be Michael Jordan, you ain't got time to be laying down. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. sleep when you need to. Mm -hmm. you eat when you need to. But this whole idea of work-life balance, so what you want to do, you have a family, you have children, you work that in. That's all mm -hmm. part of your overall management as a God. Mm -hmm. It's all part of the whole thing. It's not like I got to finish this up by two o'clock so I can lay down so I can do this and that. Mm -mm. It's all part. It's make it all inclusive and manage yourself. Use your calendar, social media, even though you may not like it, it can be a way in which you can multiply your outreach. Right. For sure. You know, mm -hmm. And we know multiplication is important, right? Mm -hmm. That's how God's write the history. Mm -hmm. They look mm -hmm. at the behaviors and the thoughts and then they multiply and then that's how they figure out what events are going to happen, who's going to make the events, what's the course of the events, and that's how they write the history. Well, we have to m multiply our efforts because mm -hmm. one-on-one -on -one is a very slow and sluggish way, very pedestrian way to do things. So right. you, social media, get out there. If you can put one post out there and reach 300 people, good, good. And then if you can put a post out there and reach 1,000 people as your followers grow, you want to use that. That's just a tool of the God. Absolutely. Right. Mm -hmm. That's Don't like it, but it's definitely a necess necessity. Right. So sis, give um, us the website and everything. Um, I don't want Instagram to cut us off. We're going to be oh, yeah. minutes left. I want to, I want your website or your social media so people can go purchase. And I want everybody out here, go to sis's website, at least get one piece. She got a cute Tam on. I see a cute hat. She, she got some accessories. Um, I'm going to go there right after this. Everybody get one piece. So give us your website. Yes, it's www.arias, A-R-I-Y-A-S, apparel.com. And you can also shop on Instagram and Facebook, too, at Arias Apparel. Arias Apparel. And spell it again for us, for those of us that are a little slow. <laughs> sure. It's A-R-I-Y-A-S, apparel, A-P-P-A-R-E-L. Absolutely. And sis, mm -hmm. make sure you tag us when you post things. We'll do our best to repost to help you with outrage. And when you get that brick and mortar, um, inshallah, by that time, our Mind of an Entrepreneur show will be able to bring the cameras and do yes. <laughs> right in your brick and mortar. And also, Absolutely. inshallah, we'll get that ecosystem together where you'll be able to come and pitch to your Muslim family. Oh, that would be awesome. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Thank, Thank you, you so sis. much. Thank you so it was much, an honor. brother, and mm -hmm. he put it in there for you. So thank okay. you so much. I really, really appreciate you and enjoy talking to you. And I'm, I can't wait. I'm going over to the website right now. Okay, thank you again. You're May welcome. Allah continue to bless you. And thank everyone for tuning in. Asam alaikum. Mm -hmm. well, alaykum salam. Thank you, everyone. You've been tuned into the Mind of an Entrepreneur show. This is our series on Black Muslim businesses. And we encourage you to binge on past episodes. Click the link in the bio. Don't forget to sign up for the manifestation series that is starting tomorrow. That link is also in the bio. So peace and blessings. Make it a good day.